Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developertoarchitect.com. In today's lesson number 80, we will wrap up our journey of caching topologies that we've seen in the last four lessons by looking at choosing the right kind of caching topology. And so, so far what we've seen in lesson 76 was kind of the use of a single in-memory cache. Then, in Lesson 77, we took a look at another kind of caching topology, a distributed cache, otherwise known as a client server. In Lesson 78, we saw the use of a replicated cache, where, in fact, all of the data was kept in sync, in memory, between all of those server instances. And then, finally, in the prior lesson, number 79, we looked at a near cache hybrid, kind of a combination of distributed as well as the single in-memory cache in Lesson 76. In this lesson, what we're going to be looking at is choosing the right kind of caching topology, kind of ending our caching. Let's take a look first within microservices. What kind of cache would be best in general? And then we'll look at kind of some specific factors in kind of fine-tuning that. When we take a look at any kind of distributed architecture where we are using caching of particular microservices, we notice that we do have multiple instances of each service. And this is generally the case, especially with microservices, but it allows us to support levels of fault tolerance as well as load balancing and hot deploys. And so because we have multiple instances of each service, Kind of the single in-memory data grid usually is not a good fit within microservices because each service will have its own data, but it won't be consistent. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the near cache hybrid we saw in the last lesson because that's also not a great fit for microservices. And let me explain that reasoning. You see, if each service, don't forget with the near cache hybrid, each service instance or component, different services or within the same instance, all have different data. They have a subset of data. And while that increases performance, especially with large data volumes, that in memory is not kept in sync. And so what that creates within a microservices ecosystem is a lot of inconsistency with regards to performance and responsiveness. You see, I may hit one instance, instance one, for example, which may contain my customer ID, but instance two does not, which means now I'm incurring additional latency to go out to the full backing cache. And so generally, this is not a good choice within microservices because of that inconsistent performance or responsiveness. Let's take a look at some other aspects of microservices because the other aspect we have is fault tolerance within microservices, one of the reasons we have multiple instances, and also that service cache coupling point. And for this reason, replicated caching is generally the best approach for microservices, but with the caveat that replicated caching falls apart in two areas, and that's high, high update rates and also the fact of too much data. And so let's take a look. Both distributed and replicated are good options within microservices, but just in general, which is better, replicated or distributed? Let me give all of you some guidelines so that you can actually take a look, whether it's in microservices or any other kind of distributed architecture, which one would be better. And the first is about optimization. What's most important to you? Are you using caching for performance or is data consistency more important? You see, replicated caching will always be faster because the data is in memory. And so we're talking about a microsecond level retrieval versus a distributed cache. I need to go out to a remote access protocol and get that data. However, consistency will always be better in a distributed cache. And so this is really one of those first areas of criteria, which is more important to me. Now, don't say both, everybody, <laughs> um, performance or consistency. Uh, the next is the size of the cache, though, because replicated caching is really well suited for those small caches, 
And when I say small, uh, usually what I'm referring to is less than 100 meg in memory. Um, when it gets larger than that, now more of a distributed cache is used. Um, and especially in microservices, when we start looking at the fact of auto-scaling instances of a microservice, I'm also auto-scaling that memory usage as well. And so larger caches tend to be a little bit better, kind of more of a better match with distributed caching, smaller, replicated. The type of data also matters. Relatively static data that doesn't change often is really well suited for a replicated cache because there's not many updates to that data, so we don't have to worry about that replication latency and keeping everything in sync. In other words, that consistency stays pretty well. However, for high transactional kind of data, usually a distributed cache is a better solution. Again, just due to that consistency of data, the fact that the replicated cache sometimes can't keep up so if I'm reading from another service instance or from another service, I may have stale data. As a matter of fact, related to that is the update frequency. Irrespective of the type of data, even if it is transactional data, relatively low updates to that data. Doesn't have to be static reference data, but relatively low updates is really well suited for the replicated cache because in that case, it can usually keep up so that the consistency is pretty high. However, on a high update rate, replicated caching can rarely keep up, which means we will get something called data collisions, which is stale data reads. So for high update rates, the distributed cache is usually a better choice. And let me give you a good example. If I have a product kind of service that keeps all of our inventory counts in memory in a cache, better to have that in a distributed cache for better consistency because that update rate is high. In a replicated cache, chances are I'm going to say that there's stock available when in fact it's already been taken up. The last criteria, fault tolerance, is a really interesting one, especially in microservices because a replicated cache has high levels of fault tolerance. And what this means is that there is no server or service to go down containing that cache. In other words, all instances and all other services have that same cache. And so if another instance comes back up, it just gets instantly replicated once those handshakes are made. However, a distributed cache has fairly low levels of fault tolerance. And because if that cache server goes down, then I have no access to data whatsoever. And this is usually a more of a consideration within high fault tolerance distributed architectures like, for example, microservices. And so these are just some of the criteria to give you some guidelines on when to choose a replicated or a distributed cache. So for more information, very excited uh, to kind of announced the um, release of Fundamentals of Software Architecture book that both Neil Ford and myself have been working on for quite some time. Uh, that full book will be published on February 25th of 2020. Um, as of the time of the recording here, which is only another week before it's released, um, the early release is still available. And so once that kind of cuts over, um, you'll be able to get the full book. Um, but very excited about that. It's uh, all sorts of stuff about um, software architecture, um, a lot of collective knowledge that both Neil and I have uh, written in that book. Also, Software Architecture Monday. Every other Monday, I do another free lesson in software architecture, so please stay tuned there. I do some private training classes as well, um, both in software architecture as well as microservices architecture and design. And I do public events, both at conferences and also public training, uh, which you can actually look at in my upcoming events uh, page of my website. And so this has been Lesson 80, Choosing the Right Caching Topology. This ends kind of our five-lesson journey of talking about caching. In Lesson 81, I'll be doing another kind of lesson in some aspect of software architecture. So please stay tuned, and thank you so much for listening.